are we in America or are we a group of little bitty Americas? You know, I, I talked about, you and Michael in particular, have talked a lot about uh, community and uh, I just, as I was just in New Orleans, we got Black Hawk helicopters and flew our fellows uh, over the city, a city that's lost half its population, a city where you, you fly over and you see the slabs where houses used to be. Uh, questions were raised about how we as a country reacted collectively to the problems of our neighbors. Uh, do we function as, as a single caring community or are we uh, more isolated in our own individual worlds and a little oblivious to the problems of the people around us? Amy? So there's no country called America. I mean, we call ourselves Americans, but our country is called the United States and many other countries. I see some people in this audience can call themselves Americans, Latin Americans, Central Americans, North Americans. We are not a nation state where the nation is some solidaristic ethnic community or community here gathered of those of us who are Americans who can all trace our ancestors back to the same place. We can trace our ancestors back to almost every, if not every, country in, in the world. But we are bound by a constitutional democracy. That's a work in progress. And there are some ideals that we take very seriously at our best. And at our worst, we do so badly by them that the rest of the world has good reason to really not only be disappointed in us, but deride us. So why do we harp on these ideals? Because we could just talk about how bad the standing is of the United States and the world and so on. We harp on these ideals because I think I can capture this best in one of my favorite cartoons. A little boy is tugging on the coattails of Thomas Jefferson, looking up at him and saying, if you take these truths to be self-evident, then why do you keep harping on them so much? <laughs> because it's true that we shouldn't preach to others, but it's also true that we've got to harp on our ideals in a way that challenges us ourselves to put them into action, because they're, they're terrific ideals but they're not self-evident in their practice. And if we don't learn how to become a nation as a constitutional democracy, combine community with individual rights. And here, Michael and I have had a long-standing, I think, false dichotomous debate between liberalism and communitarianism, because he may be a liberal communitarian, and I may be a communitarian liberal, but when push comes to shove, we don't disagree on very much about public policy. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a great moment, actually, in American history, because we've hit rock bottom on a lot of these <laughs> ideals. And when you've dug yourself in a big hole, you don't keep digging. You look up at the rest of the world through the lens of our ideals. So the only modification I would make to Michael to give us in full accord here is, yes, we have to learn from the rest of the world, but don't give up on these great ideals because they have served us at our best very well. well we